All right, I figured we'd do another memorabilia video. So I had something to put up here midweek. Um, figured today we'd do some of the shelf stuff I got. Uh, we'll start here. This is, uh, damn it, if I can get my hand underneath it. Come on. This is an Oliver Pith helmet. Um, it's like paper mache something around that material consistency. But uh, with that logo on there, it's Fleet Line era, probably late or early to mid 50s, possibly into the supers. Um, but it's all there. It's actually, I mean, it's, I've seen in a better condition, but, uh, this one was free, so I'm not going to complain. One of dad's friends was at a yard sale one time. I think he picked this up for like five bucks. Um, gave it to me, so that's, I've had that for a while. I need to, I guess I need to dust it. The thing's getting kind of nasty. Uh, then we got this guy, um, Amico Fence Wrench. I actually found this when I was cleaning out the basement of my barn after I bought this place. And I was kind of confused as to why Standard Oil would be giving out a fence wrench, but um, I thought it was kind of neat that it was still on the backing. It's, it says here everything it'll do. It's a wire splicer, clip bender, staple puller, uh, template woven wire tension curve. I'm not a fencing guy, so I don't know what that means. Um, barbed wire winder. So, yeah. It's got a ruler on it and a bunch of other stuff, but I thought that was kind of neat. I haven't br I haven't been able to bring myself to take it. Well, I, I'm not going to take it off of the backing, but... So there's that. And then I got some uh, old grease cans, which... These things, I actually... If you've been around here for a while... Um, I have a belt driven corn sheller, flat belt driven corn sheller that I've only actually used, I guess I've used it twice or did I use it once? I think I used it, no, I'm pretty sure I used it twice. Um, but anyway, I got it out of a basement of an old feed mill and after I got it home, was cleaning it up, all these oil cans were inside, or not oil, all these, uh, grease cans were inside of it. So I got a Quaker State one. That's actually in really good shape, minus the lid. Oil City, Pennsylvania, USA. And then I got this Texaco one, which has the lid. Texaco stuff is cool. I just like their Texaco. I just like the Texaco Star logo. And then Kendall, which. This one must have had a pop top or something on it. But uh, Ken Lube L421 multi-purpose grease. Well, that one's in really good shape too. Like I say, those were all inside of a corn sheller when I brought it home. So didn't have to give nothing for those. And then this was another Texaco. This was another thing I found in the basement of my barn. Outboard gear grease. I'm assuming that's something to do with a boat motor. Maybe one of you guys has been around for a while, unless it just means like outboard, like open face gears. I don't know. But outboard gear grease just kind of screams boat motor. Uh, then I got this International Harvester parts box. If I remember right, this, oh, bushings. I got one over at mom and dad's that's still full of sickle sections. Quantity four six nine five eight three R one bushings. Maybe an IH guy can look up that part number and know what that's actually for. But can't remember where I got that. Then this was another thing I found down in the basement of my barn that I wish still had the tool in it, but it's not. It's a box for a, fir a Herschel section hand, um, which was a rivet tool for do an old rivet on sickle sections. Unfortunately, there's nothing in the box, which kind of sucks, but I kept it because I thought it was cool. It still had the old Herschel decal on it, so I kept that. Oh, then we get up in here into this stuff. Got a full can of Kiwani Yellow that uh, came out of 
an old Oliver dealer up north of here. It's actually where I got, if you, you watched the first video, it's the same dealer I got my uh, 4150 postcard from. That's where that came from. It kind of sounds like there's a ball in there, but I'm guessing that the paint's junk just because, you know, it's that old. Uh, this came from the same place. This is a uh, brand spanking new in the box emblem for a, or a hood ornament for a white tractor. I initially bought this because I was going to put it on the 150, but uh, I just can't bring myself to do it. It's like it's it's never been it was still in the box on a, or still brand new in the box i just can't bring myself to put it on a tractor so it came over here and got put on the shelf and then pac-man c cat filter for a 3208 well uh, again came from that same dealer i like anything with pac-man c on it that's my like i say that's my favorite cat logo but I've never seen filters before that they've shipped with a little plastic cover over like that. And they, I've only ever seen them in boxes. Uh, then I got an Oliver filter, which is probably, I never did look up the part number, but I'm guessing that's three, well, it's definitely three digit era because it's been on, but uh That came out of, I had a, a buddy I went to school with, his brother works at a old dealer down in uh, East Central Illinois that still got a bunch of new old stock parts and they had a bunch of these filters and he bought them and I got two, I got one and I gave dad one. Uh, and this, for a while, I don't know if they're still doing it, but for a while there, the uh, Floyd County Museum, if you bought a manual from them, they sent you one of these buttons uh, it's an original from the Charles City plant. So, I guess they were given to the employees when the name was changed from Oliver to White, was the story behind them. Uh, and this oil can, again, came from the same dealer as the emblem and everything else I got here. WFE logo puts it early 80s. That's it's it's still full. It's still got oil in it. Fifteen forty. Don't know if you can read that or not. Supreme Blend Motor Oil. WFE White Farm Equipment. Uh, then a box of uh, oil filters. For the 1955, these came from Morley's. Nick found them when he was cleaning the shop out. That's going to be mid-80s. Uh, can't remember what these filters are. I thought this box was cool because it had a carry handle on it. What were these filters? Um, don't know what those filters are for, actually. I could look up the part number and tell you I just never did because I bought it solely for the purpose of throwing it on the shelf. Printed in Canada. But this is going to be late 70s because it's still got the globe on it. MAO 1065s. I'm guessing it's hydraulic filters for something. Just by the looks of them. And then uh, this was just an empty box if I remember right. That I can't remember if, yeah, that's just an empty box. I can't remember if Nick gave this to me or how I ended up with this. Yep, it was, this was transmission and over-under filters, and the short ones. One, I think that's going to be late 80s. Ag One, which was White's Parts brand after a while. And then... This was the very first time I ordered filters. Oh, nope, never mind. I lied. This came from Morley's too. Max had this sitting on the shelf for the 7300. 
had the filter in it but i used the filter and kept the box and then this is actually an alice chalmers hydraulic filter that i do not remember how i ended up with it but it still had the sticker in it which i thought was neat so i brought it here and threw it on the shelf and then this was just a late 90s agco box that i got a filter in if i remember right but i hung on to it because it was an earlier earlier agco logo box so i wanted to keep it oh and then i had these two new old stock belts that the belts are old enough i would not want to try to use them on something but i kept them because they were still in the original sleeve these came from that dealer too Those with the globe on there is going to be late 70s, really, really early 80s. Uh, so I think that's uh, pretty much all my shelf stuff. And we got a little bit of time here. I think I might we'll we'll dig a we'll dig a couple brochures out just tack on here to the end. But let me get this stuff all rearranged back on the shelf right quick okay we're gonna do one big thing because this is hand this is hands down probably the favorite my most favorite book i ever ended up with this is a full line catalog for m and w but i don't know where this name ties into it because I got this from a dealer in town. It became an antique store and she, uh, the lady that bought it was cleaning it out and in the old office she found a bunch of manuals and brochures and stuff and I went in there and bought a bunch of it and this was in it. And you bet I snatched this thing up because it's probably rare as hell, but I don't know if that was his M&W rep. But then they have the warehouse here, which was down in Sheridan, Indiana. So I don't know how these two tie into my dealer. But I would assume this is the rep, and this was the warehouse, I would assume. This might get a little long. Oh, wait, right here. Dale C. Wyckoff. Dale C. Wyckoff. Okay. He was a district manager, so I was kind of right. I haven't looked at this thing in a while. Turbo Dome Add Power Pistons. And that looks like... Ah, it's got to be a Farmall. I'm guessing that's probably about a Farmall. Looks like a 400 or a 450. It looks like it's got the chrome emblems on the side of the hood. Pulling that new of a plow, it's got to be. Turbo Dome and Add Power Pistons. One year, 1,200 tractor hours. There is a lot of cool stuff in this book. First lightweight aluminum pistons. First triple seal chrome rings. First offset piston pins, which reduces side thrust 50%, cut engine vibration, and ring and bearing wear. First, tobo, ah, first turbo dome piston head. And they had them for Alice, Case, Cockshut, Ferguson, Ford, Industrial. Which will, I'm, I'm guessing that was like loaders and shit. We'll see here in a minute. International, International High T Kit. John Deere, Massey Ferguson, Massey Harris, Minneapolis Moline, Oliver, and Re-Ring Specs. It's got pistons for WC, WD, WD45, D17. They got ring sets. And they got cock shut sets for the 30, the 40, the 3, the 4, which are just a 30 and a 40. Ring sets. They got Ferguson sets. 
All pistons have M&W jet black oil impregnated sleeves. Case pistons for everything under the sun. Ford pistons, industrial pistons. Uh, the industrial ones, they, I did not know they made them for cats. Cat D4, D6. D4 and D6 prior to 1947. D4, D6, D7, D8 after 1947. D8 pusher, whatever that is. TD14 and 18 IHs. Then... The one that made M and W famous, I think they got, you know, they got four pages I H shit in here. Cause, sorry guys, I H made a rolling chassis. M and W built a tractor. Literally, there's more shit in here for I H than any other tractor. The high torque kit for for M Super M 400 450, 15 to 24 more horse. Gives you a high torque crank, turbo dome pistons and sleeves, crank bearings, mains and rods. I could not imagine if somebody found one of those sets, what they would go for today in the original packaging. You're probably looking at $2,400, $2,500 worth of shit right there if somebody found all that shit brand new in the box today, if not more. And then here's your John Deere set, Massey Harris set, Moline set, Oliver set, re-ring specs, and then yet more stuff for the IH guys, here's your live power takeoff clutch. Which basically went on one of your bull pinions and it declutched the bull pinions. For only the frac or for only a fraction of a cost, the amazing M and W Live Power PTO gives you equivalent of forty or more horsepower auxiliary engine for use on all of your power driven equipment. Forward motion of your tractor can be started, slowed, or stopped with a convenient live power hand lever without clutching, shifting, or reshifting. PTO speed is always under independent control by throttle operation. Then the famous M&W 9 speed. Facts. When the transmission in an M fails, it's usually necessary to replace four gears. I had an H, four gears were shot. And that's the live PTO clutch parts list. And there's the nine speed parts list. That's a lot of parts for a nine speed, wow. Oh, we're not even done yet. This was back when America built things, ladies and gentlemen. This is my favorite. OSHA would have a fucking cow with this thing these days. I didn't even know they built one of these till I got this manual. It's an M&W Heavy Duty Weed Mower for IHC Cub Cadet. No guard, no nothing. The blade sticks out probably four inches past the past the deck. That way you can that way you could push stuff over and it'd cut it off before it made it under the deck. When they had the lawn cutting attachment that had a gauge wheel and everything on it so you wouldn't scalp your yard. That made for the Cub Cadet Originals and I'm guessing it'd fit like the 70s and 100s and stuff too. Anything in that frame. Not just a lawnmower, but a ruggedly built cutter that handles the big tough stuff with ease. With the cut 34 inches, height the cut 3 quarter to 11 inches. Reversible folding blades, PTO and belt drive, parallel length lift. Of 
but I thought that was neat when I first saw it. And then this was the other thing I never knew they built. They built a nine speed for the Cub Cadet. That'd be scary as hell. It gave you a 10 point, it gave you damn near an 11 mile an hour third gear on a Cub Cadet. First gear, it gave you from 3.4 to 2.3 with a seven mile an hour creeper. Second gear gave you from 4.7 to 3.1 with a 0.9 mile an hour creeper. And third gear, from 10.8 to 6.9 with a 2 mile an hour creeper. Just makes sure I did. I'd be curious to know if there's any if there's any originals around with one of them in it. Cause that'd be cool as hell. But it's an IH. Why not throw a nine speed in it? And then they had a heavy duty weed more for the B1 Alice, which is different than the one for the Cub, slightly. But that had all the same specs. It was just framed out to fit on the B-Series Alice's. And then here's your Ad Power Governor. Four. Okay, you guessed it. Internationals. And High Lift Rocker Arms. Four, you guessed it. Internationals. Water-cooled manifolds for John Deere 60s and 70s which I'm guessing basically made it a cold air intake. Dry, dry pre-cleaner. Here they show it on an Alice, but they say it's for most tractors, but basically gave you a turbo style pre-cleaner. Here's the parts list for your governor. And then you got the famous robot header control. There, they made a, they sold a shit ton of these things to make your rigid head more flexible for cutting beans. So it actually follow the ground contour. Actually, my buddy Ron got a 525 that's got a robot control on it, but it. You gave the, or you added this console in with a float valve and a whole bunch of stuff that hooked into your regular control linkage. And then it had this finger bar that went underneath it that worked the valve. And basically, once MW's patent went out, everybody copied it. It's basically the same way the float bar works on my, or the float works on my uh, new 13 foot head for the 7300 that I haven't got on yet. Harvest two to three extra bushel an acres, four six or four hundred and sixty to six hundred and ninety dollars per one hundred acres. And let's see what we got here. That's a case. That's a Ford six eleven, which is the same as an Oliver twenty five. Got a little gleaner. Got an IH. Like a 403 or a 303. That's an Oliver 40. What the hell is that one? That's a deer. What is that one? That's a... Is that a Mini? Or is that a Massey? Can't tell if that's a... That low hopper, that's got to be a Massey. Yeah. Cause they list the 3490 and the 4290 for the mass or for the minis so that's definitely newer than that that's got to be a that's got to be a massy then your parts book for the robot and then their gear reduction starters Which basically all you did was it came in a little box like that and with instructions and you basically just sawed everything apart in your starter and added this in. A 
Remove starter and Bendix, disassemble and saw off armature shaft, assemble and install. <laughs> oh, that was a different time. And that's everything that's in it. There's the ring gear, there's the sun gear. Or, if you didn't want to do that, you could buy the whole starter. And then the other famous M&W Super Snoop for corn pickers. They probably sold a crap ton of those things too. It that they, the the M&W Super Snoop was so iconic that basically it just you see a radiator extension like that on any picker, no matter what brand, if it was a deer or an Oliver, or no matter what, if it was made and sold with a picker, everybody still referred to them as Super Snoops. That's just what they were. There's Alice, Alice, Ford, I-H, 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 Deer, 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 Oliver, Oliver, Deer. And then the, the setup that destroyed a lot of 4020s and 4010s, M&W Turbocharger. Thank you, 95 horse tractor and it turned into a 105 horse overheating tractor unless you bought all the stuff to go with it yes your 4010 will have more usable drawbar horsepower 110 at 1900 rpm which they'd held up fine if you bought the oil pan to go with it which i think somewhere back in here is the ad for the for the oil pan too m and Live Hydraulic Pump for made famous on the IHs. I never knew they sold a hydraulic valve to go with them. Custom fitted reservoirs to add hydraulic capacity. But they, they actually, they became famous on the IHs, but they sold them for Alice, Case, Cockshed International, Oliver, which the only one they offered would, for the Oliver was a 70 because anything after that would have had live hydraulics. But basically it just went in between your mag or your distributor or whatever you had and drove off the drove off the auxiliary drive and then the mag drove through the pump or distributor or whatever you had. But there's the case one. There's the Alice one. Massey. This video is getting really long. I guess we're still only a little, we're not that bad. No, we're that bad. I forgot I started a new video or I started a second clip. Yeah. Sorry, I realize I haven't been showing the pages all that great. M and W dual hubs. And they also had snap on duels. Or clamp on duels, whichever you prefer. And then they also sold the uh, dual spacer that used the four wheel weight holes that most companies used, except deer, then they decided the three was better, so you had to buy deer weights. But because it's M&W, naturally it's shown on a 560 farm all. M&W duals eliminate wheel, sp wheel slippage, increase field speeds up to 30%. 73 rods on single wheels, 92 rods on dual wheels. Less compaction. There it is on a 560, a 4010, Case 800, 
And then there's the snap-on dual with the spacer ring. And I think everything, everything past here is just, yeah. And it's, this is the cool part. Effective, or well, I'm guessing because it says effective October 1st, 1962, that this is a 19, ni or late 1961 print, but it's cool because it's, it gives all the list prices. So the turbo dome and add power pistons, let's say you had a WD, of a, a uh, turbo dome kit was $74.10. Or let's say you had a John Deere A or 60 that you wanted to go 90 over, $58.80. Uh, international, let's just go with a standard one on the Farmall or a Farmall M or W6, $79.80. Oliver 66, $71.90. If you got the high torque kit and you want to be a big time spender, you got a Farmall M or a W6 four inch pistons. That's to crank the crank the pistons, the sleeves, everything in the ad power kit, $246.20. But everything past here is just price lists and stuff, which is kind of neat that it gives you the price. Got a super snoot. You wanted one for an Oliver 77, $42.95. That uh, mower for the Cub Cadet was $199.50, and the 9 speed was $79.95. Which I'm guessing because of that price, there probably wasn't a lot of them sold because $80 was a lot to spend on a lawnmower. Yeah, but that's kind of neat. And then you got your mail-in cards for business inquiries back here. But that's that. That's probably my favorite thing I have, period, just because it's M&W. And that stuff's a little hard to come by, especially a full-line catalog like that. So, wow, this is going to be a 30-minute long video. So, I guess we'll cut her off here. So... That's it for this one. We'll catch you all on the next one.